Hey, what's up? This is Ill Factor from BeatAcademy.com. Now, recently, Daft Punk announced that they are splitting up and will no longer be working together in producing music. Although I'm saddened by this news, I truly am grateful for the impact they've had in my life and the lives of millions of others with the music that they've created. So to pay tribute to them, in this video, I wanna share some music production tips and techniques while focusing on certain aspects of Daft Punk's productions. We're gonna take a listen to some of the drums and synth sound design that you can hear in songs like The Funk. Then we're gonna get into the sampling and how to create some of the vibe that you hear on the Discovery album, such as Digital Love. And then we're gonna focus on a lot of the vocal production that you can hear on a lot of their work. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, I was first introduced to Daft Punk when I heard the song The Funk from their homework album. Instantly, my mind was just blown and I was all in. I was like, how do you create music like this? And I wanna learn how to do that. So I'm gonna start with creating some, uh, sharing some music production tips from The Funk. And I'll start with the drums. Now, throughout the whole homework album and Discovery and a lot of Daft Punk's drums can really sum, be summed up with texture and warmth. So a lot, of the, a lot of the things you're hearing are like loops that are layered with some vintage drum machines. And I'm gonna start with a classic drum break here. So we have this old school loop. So you hear a lot of the ambience in there. You've got some of the stuff that's going on between each snare and the hi-hat. And then what we wanna do is reinforce that by layering a nice punchy kick. So I have a drum rack here loaded with a kick sample. And we're just simply gonna draw in a four on the floor pattern. So let's play that now. And then we're gonna carve out some space from for this kick drum from the loop. So we'll use an EQ8, just click and drag that over that track. And now let's go ahead and take away some of the low end. And that, that the kick becomes more clear and focused when you do that, as opposed to having all that low end back in. But I wanna change the slope, so I don't want it too sharp. We'll go from times four to the next one. There you go. And then we're gonna layer that with a vintage drum machine. I'm using the 707 chord kit. And when you just listen to this, these drums, they have that nice old school vintage uh, texture to them. So we're going with the 77. This is a stock 707 kit that comes with Ableton Live. And you might come across a stock vintage drum kit in whichever DAW that you have. And we're simply going to continue with our kick and snare pattern. And the kick is not every four on the floor, it's just on the one and on the three. And then we're having the, the, the hi-hat pattern. So let's listen to that. And then we have an eighth note hi-hat pattern. Let's listen in. All right, now let's layer the three. Okay, now with all these three tracks, let's group them up. And we have a drum bus that we've created. We're gonna add our saturator on there, give just a little bit of drive, and I'm switching from the analog clip to the soft sign. It's gonna add some more uh, grit to that. Using an EQ to just shape uh, a little off the bottom, but give a nice little bass boost. The thing with that I've noticed a lot about Daft Punk's drums is that they're just punchy. There's sometimes not even a lot of low in from the kick, but it is just nice and punchy, and they tend to be really warm. So uh, that's why I'm shaving off some of the high end here with this EQ. And I'm gonna use this Rough Rider plugin. This is a free compressor made by Audio Damage. You can download this. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and compress these three new layers together. So slow attack, so we still get the punchiness through. If I brought the attack all the way down, we would really eat up all the transients. And we just wanna kind of sandwich those three tracks together and make them feel a little bit more cohesive. Now sampling is a huge key, as we'll see throughout this video as well. 
And sometimes just capturing the right note or the right sample from a riff can really help because there's a lot of texture and, and artifacts that are caught in those samples that really give some character to the sounds that you're gonna be using. So here we have a bass riff. And I'm just going to focus in on using one of those notes. So we'll go with that one right there. And so once I have that note highlighted, I can then go ahead and create the pattern. I can go back in here and adjust this if I wanted it to be shorter. I will leave it there, add a little bit of fade out, and let's see what that sounds like with the drums. So let's add a little bit of drive. So we'll go to our drive and color folder here, add some overdrive. And EQ this a little bit. And give some sidechain compression so that the kick still punches through a little bit. So we'll sign the side chain. The source is gonna come from the kick. All right, next, let's recreate the main melody line that you can hear throughout the funk. And for this, I'm gonna use Ableton Live's analog plugin. You could use any synth that you might have in your DAW. The results should be pretty much the same. We're gonna start with setting our voices from polyphonic, uh, which right now is set to eight, to monophonic. So I'm gonna go from voices, from eight to mono. Why? Because this is a lead and I don't want any of the notes to overlap one another. Then we want something buzzy and bright. So you wanna head over to starting with a sawtooth waveform. So by default, there both oscillators are already set there and that's cool. So next, let's set our octave for the oscillator one, an octave higher. And then let's set the octave for oscillator two, an octave lower. Now let's go ahead and check out the riff. All right, now long way to go, but before even moving or tweaking the analog, I'm gonna put a distortion plugin on there. And this could be a really helpful way to craft and sound design with some processing on there, because then it actually kind of bridge, it fills in the gap a little bit while you're creating some of the sound design with your synth. So I'm gonna go to the overdrive, drag and drop that over to uh, right after the analog, and let's just give some overdrive distortion. Now heading back to the analog, what we wanna do is now go straight to our filter frequency and resonance right now. So bring the filter frequency down and let's boost the resonance up. This is gonna give us that nice, uh, the, the, the type of tone that we're looking for. And you see why having a distortion before doing this can really be helpful? Because without it, it's there, but that overdrive really helps like, oh wow, I'm, I kinda, I'm in the ballpark, so to speak. And, and you might do less tweaking on the synth trying to overcompensate. So we'll leave the resonance there and the frequency cutoff there. And I wanna make some adjustments to the actual filter envelope. So right under here in this section, all these parameters pertain to the filter uh, envelope, the frequency and the resonance. So let's bring our decay, let's bring this, uh, let's bring it up right over here. And we'll bring the sustain down just a little bit. And then the release will bring down as well. And we can maybe raise the attack just a little bit, maybe, maybe right here. And this envelope right here, the amount is how much um, the envelope will have an influence on the filter frequency cutoff and resonance. So we can toy around with this till we get it to taste. Okay, that's cool. Now let's just balance the actual level of the oscillators. So let's bring this down, the, the higher octave down a little bit and maybe boost the bottom one. 
I want to give some glide so that the, the notes are gliding from one note to the next. And depending on, you know, even the slightest touch now in the filter frequency will change the, the overall vibe and, and the tonality of the sound. We'll do some detuning, just some slight detuning on each one, and place the noise oscillator on there. But we want to lower that a lot. That's cool. Now let's wind this up with um, with some chorus and a little bit of EQing. So I'm going to EQ after the overdrive. Brighten this up a little bit more. And then the chorus is going to help widen this up. I've got the chorus here and just messing around with the dry and wet to we find a sweet spot here. I'm going to give a little bit more drive and tone. And really, this is just going back and forth and tweaking with the process until you get uh, the sound that, you, that, that you're happy with. And let me just borrow the side chaining from the bass. I'm going to hold Option, click, and drag that over here so we get a little bit of uh, pumping action. All right, let's hear what it sounds like with everybody. Now there's a particular bass sound that I just fell in love with that you can hear Daft Punk use on a lot of their productions. It's particularly evident throughout the Human After All album. I call it the digital bass, and I want to share with you on how to create that type of sound. So we'll start with going to our instruments using a wavetable. We're just going to use a one oscillator set to a sawtooth. And like we did before, I want to start with using digital distortion. Now this is huge on a lot of uh, Daft Punk stuff, this bit crushing. So what we're gonna do is head over to our uh, audio effects, go to our drive and color, and use Redux. Your DAW might have it under bit crusher or digital distortion, same thing here. So uh, with that on there, we're simply going to now just move our cutoff frequency down, and the secret here is getting that resonance to be really sharp. And let's go from polyphonic to mono and shorten the release. And then what I'm going to do is now bring the rate of our bit crusher down. And then raise the resonance up a little bit and then start messing around with the filter cutoff. And so I want to automate, well, not automate, but I want to have the envelope control the opening of that cutoff frequency. So head over to the matrix, assign the filters, filter frequency cutoff to envelope two. And then let's go ahead and bring the release down, sustain down. And maybe slowly open that up. And there you go. All right, now let's talk about sampling. Now, Daft Punk had a knack of finding these amazing riffs that they then just brought new life to them to share with the rest of the world. So um, there, there is a special art form to crate digging and finding specific samples and then chopping them up. So for instance, here is a sample from a artist, George Duke, and the song is called I Love You More. And this is the sample that you primarily hear throughout the song, Digital Love. That's it, right? Call it a day. But there's some special things that get added around there that I want to walk you through as well. So a lot, most of the time, you're hearing a lot of big crushing, some filtering out, as we talked about earlier, to make space for some added production. 
So what I want to do is EQ this sample. So we're going to use the EQ8, just take away some of that low end there. Do a little bit of bit crushing or digital distortion. And for this sample in particular, we've got this nice flange or more of a phaser happening throughout the sample. So we've got a phaser here, stock phaser plugin. That's cool. And then we're going to use our auto filter to just kind of filter in and out throughout the arrangement of the song. And then I just went ahead and put some drums together. So I'll add the two of them together. So as you can see, crate digging and finding records with standout riffs such as this is an essential part of Daft Punk's workflow. And alongside with that is the licensing and the clearings of those samples so that then they can use those records and put out the, the music that they're making. So if you're asking, well, then how would I go about clearing or licensing records that I would like to use in my productions? Well, let me draw your attention to an amazing resource such as Tracklib. Tracklib is an amazing resource because it becomes your virtual record shop. But not only that, you have the ability to easily clear and license the samples that you're going to be using in your productions. All the catalog that they've put together for you to browse through has already been pre-cleared, but depending on how you use the sample will vary on the amount that you need to spend for the license. For instance, they've created a category, A, B, and C, and they share with you how the revenue share will be split, but basically everything is black and white and laid out easy to follow. A lot of the records on Tracklib fall into the category C, where if you're using let's say two seconds or less, you're pretty much sharing 2% of the revenue share, 60 seconds or less, 20%, and so on. You could use this graph to kind of demonstrate. Also, there's a category per license. Once again, category C, which the majority of their catalog falls under, would only require $50 per license to license that song. And it's already streamlined. The whole process is ready to go. Once you find a sample that you wanna use, it's as easy as just creating an account and they'll walk you through each step of the process. Not only is it licensable and already clear for you, browsing and finding tracks is really easy too. You can head over to tracks and they've got it already lined up by genre. And I like looking for the collections section here because they've got all these amazing collections that they've put together. 80s nightclub and you can tie in, you can then play uh, you can listen to it and preview it. And they also have this really cool loop player as well. When you click this, you can hear what the sample would sound like in a loop format. So it's really cool. You can somewhat already chop from the browser. So that makes it really cool. And then you can just click the star if you want to add it to your favorites. But let's say you want to fine tune the search. You go to all tracks. You can look up the genre here. You can change the song key. Man, I want a sample that's already set in the key that I'm working in. Makes it less, uh, you know, there's a lot of less artifacts when I'm changing the key or whatever. Track type, different type of just drums, maybe drum instrumental, drum breaks, vocals. This is a really cool one too, BPM. You can narrow the search. So I'm looking for songs or records that are in this BPM. The release dates. Uh, where in the around the world and the license category. This is also helpful. Say, well, I don't have a big budget or you know, I just want to find everything in the C category that is from this part of the world and was released anywhere in the 70s. So we'll just narrow that search down to right there. And there you go. Then you can just browse through and then find a record that you would want to use and incorporate that into your productions. So Tracklib is an amazing resource that walks you through the whole process of being inspired by finding a sample that you would want to use, then actually being able to have access to high quality versions of that, use that in your productions, and then have a streamlined process to license and clear the sample that you want to use. Amazing resource.
All right, heading back here to Ableton Live, I want to now focus in on one of the hallmark sounds of Daft Punk, and that is vocals. Everything from the vocoder to the talk box and all in between, it is a distinct hallmark sound of Daft Punk. So let's go ahead back to this Digital Love recreation, and I'm going to be uh, focusing in on this vocal track that I have. Now, this is me just singing the line, so let me go ahead and play that for you. Last night, I had a dream about you. Yeah, that sucks. But what I want to do is use the Waves real-time tuning to make this a lot more robotic. So first thing I'm going to do is enable our Waves tune right here. But what I, what I love about the Waves tune is I have this reference tone and the target pitch. So I'm going to enable those two, and that's going to allow me to actually play the melodic line that I want. So in order to set that up, I need to create another MIDI channel. So here's an empty MIDI channel, and I'm going to make sure that the output of this MIDI channel is going to focus on track seven, which is Vox, and the item in track seven is going to be Waves Tune. Now I can go ahead and trigger this MIDI channel, and it will go ahead and play the reference tone that you hear in the Waves Tune. And the note that I'm playing on my MIDI con controller corresponds with the note that you see in Waves Tune. So that determines the note or the pitch that my vocal will perform. So let me go ahead and play the melody, triggering the Waves Tune reference tone. And then what I'll do is enable that to actually have the vocals um, align with that melody. Now let's go ahead and see what it does to the vocal. So now the vocal is going to be tuned according to the melody that I just created. Last night, I had a dream about you. In this dream, I'm dancing right beside you. And it looked like everyone was having fun. That kind of feeling, I've waited so long. All right, so that's the riff. Now let's do a little bit of vocal processing here. I want to thin it out. So I'm going to start with just some basic EQing. I'm going to just EQ the low end here and just take some low mid bump and some high mid there. And I'm going to use some overdrive to add some grit to this vocal. Last night, I had a dream about you in this dream. Now, what gives it that telephone effect and that feeling that it's just really thin and far in the back is you, you could use an EQ to do this, but I'm basically cutting all the lows and the low mid and all the highs and just focusing on a almost like a bandpass frequency. So. I decided to use an auto filter to get that same effect. Last night, I had a dream about you. In this dream, I'm dancing right beside you. And then we'll use a chorus here to just widen up, make it feel a little bit fatter and wider and stereo wise. Last night, I had a dream about you. Now, since we cut some of those frequencies from the lows and the low mids and the highs, it's going to go, you know, it's going to feel very far back in the mix. So I'm using a utility plugin and boosting the gain up a little bit to bring it right back in. Last night. Now let's see what it sounds like with everybody else. Last night, I had a dream about you. In this dream, I'm dancing right beside you. And it looked like everyone was having fun. That kind of feeling, I'm waiting so long. Now I want to focus in on that talk box type of sound that we can hear on a lot of the records from Daft Punk, and particularly on Around the World. So here I just recorded myself saying the phrase, Around the world, around the world. Sounds like poop, but it'll work. And similar to what we just did, where we had the MIDI channel trigger the Waves tune, I'm going to do the similar thing. First, I'm going to add a little bit of gate, some EQ to my vocal, and a little bit of compression. That's it. And then I'm using Isotope's Vocal Synth 2. And we're going to use the TalkBox function here. So that's a module that you can use within the, um, within the Vocal Synth. And I want to make sure that I'm not using the Auto Mode, but the MIDI mode. That way, I can have a MIDI source, such as the MIDI track, perform the melody I wish my vocal TalkBox to perform. So I set the key to A minor. We're using a bit of voice correction so it can at least, you know, tune up the vocal before it gets processed. And then here is the actual MIDI. This is the melody for the Around the World part. So once again, 
I had the route, the output of this MIDI track. There's no instruments on there. It's just a blank MIDI channel. And the output is going to the around Vox, which is the channel where the vocal synth is on and choosing vocal synth two. Once I have that selected, I can now trigger the melody, um, have the melody that I have on the MIDI channel trigger the vocal synth. And this is what we get. Around the world, around the world. So I'm just changing the settings here, just cranking the drive and boosting the speaker all the way up. That's what gives it the, the effect that you hear on that type of song. Around the world, around the world, around the world, around. I'm heading over here to the voicing, and by default set to poly, but I want to set it to mono so I can give a little bit of a glide in my vocal. Around the world, around the world. Adding some distortion here, which is embedded inside the vocal synth. Around the world. And adding some chorus. Around the world, around the world. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and encouraging. And if you enjoyed this video, I've got some good news for you. I'm releasing my updated new producing EDM course. It's an all comprehensive course that teaches you how to produce EDM as well as popular subgenres as house, tech house, and future bass, drum and bass, and much more. I even interview veteran DJs and producers to get their insight in helping you shape the sound that you're looking for, such as DJ Swivel, who has mixed and produced for Chainsmokers and Tiesto, to get their insights for producers today in this genre of music. I'm going to be releasing more details soon about this course, so if you want to get on the waiting list or want more information, visit beatacademy.com edm. I'll be launching this course at the end of this month, so be sure to click the link below in the description box or visit the website that I mentioned earlier so that you'll be instantly notified when the course drops. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.